It's GED question of the daytime, and our problem today reads, a square has an area, we have an area, ooh, let me get my pen out. So a square has an area of 94 square yards, and then what is the side length of the square to the nearest tenth of a yard? Okay, so I can start drawing out this picture. Hopefully we know by now that a square is a quadrilateral, a four-sided shape, and all four of those sides here are the same uh, length, and it has those perfect right angles. Um, and I know my area. Okay, my area is the number of squares to cover this shape, 94. Now, a lot of you guys know how you find area. Um, you multiply the length times the width if you have any kind of a rectangle. And yes, a square is a type of rectangle. And so the cool thing about a square is that um, the length and the width will be the same. So if you wanted to try to work this problem arithmetically, you'd be a little stuck because you'd be looking for a number times itself that's equal to 94. A number times itself, let's, I don't know, let's call that side length times side length, um, that is equal to 94. And as some of you guys have already figured out, you know, 7 times 7 is 49, 8 times 8 is 64, 9 times 9 is 81, 81, I'm close, but 10 times 10 is 100. Guess what? I've gone right over 94. 94 isn't a perfect square, and so th this problem is going to be really hard to solve arithmetically. It is time. This is why we need to know how to solve this algebraically, too, okay? So here's what we're going to do. The very first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with the formula. So let's hit up our formula sheet. Okay, what information do I have? I have my area of a square, and I'm looking for the side length. So I need a formula that relates area and side length. Let's go find it. So here is my GED formula sheet. And as you can see, the very first uh, rows that I have, the very first section here are all area formulas. So I'm in the right place. And I want area of a, area of a square formula. And there's that. A equals S squared. And so that's the formula we're going to be using here. So let's pull back up our problem. Very first step when you go to solve anything with a formula is just to write down the formula. Please don't plug into it. Don't do anything with it yet. Make sure you write down both sides, the left and the right hand side, because you could be using both. Um, and in algebra, you often have to use both sides. Okay, and now we're going to plug in what we know. What do we know? We know that our area, our A, is 94 square yards. So I'm going to plug that in for A. Underneath A, I'm going to write 94. And notice, when you substitute in that value, when you substitute a 94 for an A, the A is not there anymore. Just the number is there. We swapped out the mystery. The mystery's been solved. Now, S is the thing I'm looking for. It's still a mystery, so it remains a letter, and I don't lose um, my operations. Okay, so what we have here now is just a really easy one-step algebra problem, okay? Uh, just a little one-step equation we got to solve. We need s to be alone. That's what it means to solve an equation. You isolate the variable or get it alone. The only thing that's over here on this side with s is this square, so I have to get rid of a square. So in order to do that, you have to ask yourself, what's the opposite of squaring or the inverse? Well, we know the opposite of adding is subtracting. The opposite of multiplying is dividing. But what's the opposite of squaring? That is a square root, a square root. That gets you back to the root of what, where a square came from. And so I want to get rid of a square, and so I'm going to do the opposite of squaring, square rooting. Now, you can't just make a change in math because you feel like it, okay? Um, the rule of algebra that we learn as soon as we get an equation is we can do whatever we want as long as we do it to both sides. So I'm going to come over here to the left-hand side. I'm going to square root that side as well. Okay, now that I've made my balance change, let's see what happens to my equation. Square and square root on this right-hand side are going to cancel, so my s will be alone just like I wanted. And now the square root of 94. So uh, I don't know this one. I'm going to need to plug it into my calculator. And so I'm going to do that by pressing this. These are the calculator commands to take the square root. You're going to type the second button because the square root's in green. Anytime you want something in green, you have to hit the second button. Then you're going to type that x squared button, because right above that is that square root symbol in green. 
and then you're going to type enter and then we have to have a conversation okay so let's do that so i'm going to take the square root of 94 and i'm going to press enter and i have to tell you i got a confusing answer do you know what happened when i typed this into my calculator my calculator gave me exactly what I typed in. It came right back out, out with the square root of 94. What my calculator did was give me a simplified square root. But what I want for my answer is I want a decimal approximation. You know how I know that I want a decimal approximation? Because of this language. See this language? To the nearest tenth of a yard. That rounding language right there gives me a clue that I wanted a decimal answer. So if you got a simplified square root out of your calculator uh, when you wanted a decimal answer, you need to know how to flip modes in this TI-30XS calculator. There's different modes to it. So this is what I want you to do for me. If you got this square root of 94, I want you to hit the mode button. Mode. So this is switching modes. So you hit the mode button, and then what you're going to see here is the very last line when you hit the mode button has two choices. You see a classic mode, and you see a math print mode. This is the only mode function that I usually end up using with my students. I flip back and forth between classic and math print multiple times when taking a GED test, so you really need to know how to do this. Okay, so since I want a decimal answer, I need to make sure that I'm in classic mode. So I'm going to go arrow down until my cursor is flashing on classic mode, and then I'm going to press enter. I've now selected classic mode. You can go ahead and press clear to get out of that screen and now try it all over again. Let's try to take the square root of 94. So second and that square root above x squared and notice you're gonna see parentheses this time and 94 and enter and you see I do get a decimal out and I get a nice long decimal and that's because when it's not a perfect square it'll be one of these uh, irrational decimals that goes on and on forever. So in my calculator screen it says 6.695359 da 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 da. I'm not going to take all those digits cuz I'm about to round them. So my very final act will be rounding as instructed. This particular problem told me to round to the nearest tenth of a yard. Tenth place is right after the decimal right here. So that's where my number is going to get chopped off. It's going to end. So consider the next number, the number right afterwards. It was a 9. Um, if your number is 5 or higher, what's going to end up happening is it's going to bump the number in the tenths place up before it dies. So indeed, my number's a 9. It's large enough to matter. And so my number is going to bump up here to 9.7. 9.7 is the approximate side length of my square. Definitely a tricky problem. Oh, and I'm still not done. You know why? Because I need a unit. Oh my goodness, I've written all over this whole paper. So 9.7 what? Be very careful. Side length is a dimension. It's only a line. A side is just a line. And so it's going to be measured in plain old yards, not square yards. Okay, so final answer to this problem whew, is 9.7 yards. If you have any questions about this, be sure to drop them in the comments. If you just disregarded me because you don't want to learn how to use this TI-30XS calculator, you are just shooting yourself in the foot. Because as you can see, it's a little complicated to learn to use it, but it is so worth it. You would be hard-pressed to come up with this number on your own without a calculator. And the TI-30XS is the one you get on the GED. So, there you go. Um, keep following along. I think I'll do a few more problems like this over the next few questions of the day. We could use some practice with this skill.